One of the reasons why I recommend people learn how to code is because there's so many different ways you can make money from it. In this video, I'm going to be covering the 11 different ways that you can make money as a software developer. Now, the first three ways that we're going to cover are what we call active income. You're essentially trading your time for money. But the rest of the ways fall into what we call passive income. Now, there's no such thing as truly passive income. You always have to put some work in. But with passive income, it's not directly tied to the hours that you work. So let's get started with those active forms of income. Now, the first one is getting a full time job as a software developer. Now, this is one of the easiest ways to earn an income using your coding skills, but it can be quite difficult to get your foot in the door and get your first job. But once you do have a job and you get a few years experience under your belt, it can be quite a stable career. There's so much demand for software development that you'll never be out of a job. As far as salary goes, as a junior developer, you can expect to earn around 40K, especially in major cities. But once you've gained a lot of experience, you can earn as much as 300K as a developer, especially when you include things like stock options. A full-time job is obviously the most time consuming and generally you're gonna be looking at around 40 hour week. Now, some companies are introducing four day work weeks, but as a software developer, you're often expected to do unpaid overtime. So you're gonna still probably be doing around 40 hours. Now, the next level on the independence ladder is becoming a contract software developer. Now, contractors can work either through their own company or through an agency, and they do get to pick which kind of assignments they get to work on. Contracts usually last anywhere between three and six months, but they can get extended and even last as long as a year. When you're on a contract, the hours are going to be similar to that as a full time developer, especially if you're working on site at a customer's office. However, generally as a contractor, your work should be more results based rather than paid per hour. As a result, you can end up spending less hours working if you can get the job done in time, or you might end up spending a lot more. The pay for contract developers does tend to be a lot higher, but you do of course have to take care of your own taxes as well as things like health insurance and other benefits. Having said that, contract developers do tend to get paid between $300 and $1,000 a day based on the experience and industry that you're working in. However, you do tend to need several years of experience before you become a contractor. Companies are looking for experts in their field. They want someone who can get the job done quicker than one of their salaried employees can. They don't want to be paying for someone who doesn't know what they're doing and needs to learn what they're doing on the job. Of course, if you're on a short term contract, you're going to have to be applying for new contracts several times a year. But generally, the interview process for contractors is a lot simpler than there are for permanent developers. So even though the hours you're going to be working while on a contract is going to be similar to that for full time developers, you can potentially take month long breaks in between your contracts. Now, number three is becoming a freelance developer. Freelance development is similar to contract development, but you're less likely to be working on a long term contract that spans months. It's more likely to be small projects that you can do remotely. Generally, freelancers get paid per hour, but it can be a lot more profitable if you get paid per project, provided it doesn't take you longer than you expected to deliver that project. It can be quite difficult to get jobs as a freelancer to begin with, but you can use platforms such as Upwork or People Per Hour and start bidding on smaller jobs. Generally, you need to gain a reputation first before you can work on bigger projects and increase your hourly rate. Even though you can get work on these platforms, it's generally better to build a website start promoting yourself and start growing your personal brand. Freelance software developers generally earn between $50 and $150 per hour, but you can earn a lot more than that if you price your work by project. As a freelancer, you're unlikely to be working eight hours a day, five days a week, but the high hourly rate is there to take account of the times that you're not working and you can still earn a good living as a freelance developer. One of the key benefits of working as a freelance developer is you get to set your own hours. You don't have to work a set number of hours a day as you don't have an employer to answer to. That's it for the active forms of income. Whether you're working as a full-time developer or a freelancer, you're still ultimately trading your time for money. And that is going to set a cap, or but a very high cap on how much you can earn. The rest of the ways I'm going to cover fall into what we call passive income. Now, there's no such thing as truly passive income beyond maybe investing your money. All of these things require quite a bit of upfront work. But the key thing is, once you've done that work, they generally keep earning you money even while you sleep. Now, one of the easiest ways that developers can earn an extra bit of money is by writing technical articles. If you have quite a bit of experience already, then I'm sure there's quite a few topics that you're knowledgeable about that you could write about. If you've ever worked as a professional developer, you'll know that companies are always trying to get their developers to write on their blogs. But generally, developers don't have enough time in the day to be able to do that. So companies have to look for outsiders to write the blogs for them. Generally, you can earn anywhere between $50 to $1,000, depending on the length and the, how complicated the article is. You can check out this website called whopaystechnicalwriters.com. And this gives you a list of all the companies that will pay for articles, as well as the sort of articles that they're looking for. 
In some cases, the companies will tell you what they want an article written about. In other cases, you'll be expected to write an article about their product. So if they have an API, for example, you might write an article about how you used that API to build something. It can generally take a day or two to write a good article, but even though you're unlikely to get any passive income after you've been paid, it can be a good way to earn some extra money as a developer. Number five is creating an online course. As a software developer, you've learned a lot of valuable skills that you can teach to others. Creating an online course is a great way to earn additional income, and it's definitely something that can earn you passive income after you've made it. There are developers such as Kent C. Dodds who does courses on JavaScript and React and easily earns seven figures a year from it. You can use platforms such as Udemy or Teachable to host your courses as well, which makes it really easy to do. Generally, you'll need to promote your courses yourself, although I think Udemy does do some promotion for you. It helps a lot if you've got a large social media following already, so whether that be YouTube or Instagram, that you can sell your courses to your followers. Where it's definitely possible to earn millions from creating online courses, there's equally a chance that you could earn nothing as well if you don't manage to sell it. If you plan on making a really detailed, high quality course, it can take anything from several weeks to months to be able to create it. And you need to be comfortable talking on camera, or at least talking into a microphone to be able to do that. If you don't like the idea of creating online courses, you might like number six, which is writing programming books. If you already like writing, whether that be blog posts or somewhere else, then you might like the idea of writing a book. Books on new programming languages and frameworks tend to do very well. You don't need to find a publisher to be able to do your own book. You can self-publish it on Amazon. Writing a book, even a technical book, is very time consuming, but definitely it's something that you'll earn passive income from. And once you've got a few books published, then you might earn a full-time income as well. One great example is Greg Lim, who'd written more than 20 books on Amazon and has made over $160,000 from it. I've also seen quite a few freelancers and other developers write small books that they sell for either 99p or free on Kindle Unlimited. And they use that as a way to promote their expertise and sell their online courses and services. Number seven is one of the more traditional ways you might think of earning money as a developer, and that is by building a mobile app. Everyone has probably heard of Flappy Bird. At its height, was earning $50,000 a day. Now, it's unlikely that you're going to build a big hit like that, but it's still possible to earn a good income from writing mobile apps. Games do particularly well on mobile, especially when you factor in things like in-app purchases, but it's a lot of effort to create a game if you're not already a game developer. There's things like graphics and music that you need to account for, as well as actually learning mobile development to begin with. While it's definitely possible to earn a lot of money from mobile apps, it's also possible to earn nothing. There's many apps on the App Store that have had no downloads and have earned the developer nothing. And that's after spending many months developing it. If you're planning on developing for iOS, then you also need to buy an Apple developer license and have a, an Apple product such as a, a MacBook and an iPhone to be able to do the development. Now, number eight doesn't require as much effort as creating a mobile app, and that is writing a developer blog. A blog can be a great way to share your knowledge and earn some additional income on the side. Now, the traditional way of monetizing a blog is through adverts, but you need a lot of traffic to be able to do that. You can also monetize a blog through your own products, whether that be online courses or a book, as well as using affiliate links, where you basically earn a commission for recommending a product to your readers. To be able to grow a blog, you generally need to be posting consistently at least once a week, as well as promoting your blog posts on social media. If you want to start earning some money from your blog, you can use Google AdSense for that. You generally won't get very much, at least until you have hundreds of thousands of page views a month. However, once you do get to about 10,000 page views, you can look at other ad networks that generally pay more. If you happen to write any posts about books you've read or products you've used, you can include affiliate links in those posts and that will earn you a small commission, generally somewhere between two and 10%. It doesn't cost the person that clicks on the link anymore, but it earns you a little bit of commission. Once you have a large audience with at least tens of thousands of people reading your blog, you can also get sponsorship from companies who will pay to include an advert at the end of each of your posts. This will generally give you a lot more money than you would from having Google AdSense or another ad network. Now, of course, I can't do a video on earning money as a developer without, of course, mentioning YouTube. Starting a YouTube channel can be a great way to earn extra money as a developer, but you're in it for the long haul. YouTube is probably one of the hardest ways to earn money from your knowledge, but it can pay off in the long run. You need at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours to be able to join the YouTube Partner Program and start earning money from the adverts they display on your videos. For example, my channel isn't yet monetized. I don't get anything for doing this video, so make sure if you like it, hit subscribe before you finish watching. If you do manage to do well on YouTube, you can earn a full-time income from it, but generally you'll need at least 100,000 subscribers to do that, 
And generally YouTubers combine that with their own products as well as sponsorship from other companies. There are other ways to earn money from YouTube videos beyond being monetized. For example, you can include affiliate links to products you mentioned, but the best way to monetize YouTube is to guide your visitors to your own courses and books by plugging them occasionally in your videos. Now, number 10 is something I haven't got experience with myself, but I've seen many developers do, and that is starting a podcast. If you aren't into making videos, but you don't mind talking into a microphone, then starting a podcast might be for you. There are quite a few developer oriented podcasts. And again, like YouTube, it can take a while to take off. Now, unlike YouTube, there's no partner program for podcasts. You need to go and seek your own sponsorships from companies or promote your products in your episodes or include affiliate links in your descriptions. Podcasters with around 10,000 downloads per episode can earn between $500 and $900 per episode. So it's worth doing if it's something that you think you'd be good at. Now, the last one on my list is to start a newsletter. Now, you can do this with platforms such as Substack and charge a monthly fee to be able to read your newsletter. Or if you want to create a free newsletter, you can do that as well. And then you can earn money through sponsorships or through affiliate links or even plug in your own products. George Lee Orson, who writes The Pragmatic Engineer, recently did a tweet to say that he was earning $62,000 a year within the first month of writing his newsletter. He's probably earning a lot more than that now. And I have seen others that are earning either six or seven figures from a paid newsletter. Although it's possible to have instant success, Jersley said his success came from writing a blog first, which he wrote to for years and gained quite a lot of traffic before starting a newsletter. The best advice I can give is to be doing at least two of these now. Whether that's starting a newsletter as well as your full-time job or starting a YouTube channel, it's better to have multiple streams of income than it is to have just one. If you are already a software developer with a full-time job, you can probably relate to this video where I cover the five worst things about being a software developer. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.